Mga kababayan, dalawang araw po natin inantay ito. Narito na po, Swift laban sa Coney Island. Let's go to the Coney Island Ice Cream Stars. They're kicking off with Evangelista Jerry Codinera. Manny Victorino is there. Glenn Capacio is also there. Together and, with Rosella. Yes, and Rosella was covered by Jerry Codinera. Thank you, Dr. J. First possession, Swift. It's Boy Pitts Victoria, Mineses, together with Distrito, Rhea Lubit, and Nelson Asaitono. First crack at the basket. Mineses also is going to be tested in this ball game as he gets the first two points of the game. Uh, although he's been in the league quite a couple of years now, you know, it's one of the big tests on how much he can prove himself against a very tough defensive team like the Coney Island All Stars. Had a great game against Coney Island, and the last time they met, he scored a total of 28 points. Here's Evangelista, he loves to cut up the inside, we're tied. Still the first minute of action. Long Tom doesn't work. The referees, by the way, Andy Bartolome, De Leon, and Rivera. Coney Island showing a little patience in their uh, half-court game. And there's a lot of pass there to Jerry. He should have the advantage here. But the weak side help made him miss that shot. You're absolutely correct when you said Jerry Codinera, he's the most consistent ice cream star as of the present time. Still tied at two all. Each basket, each possession will be so vital in a game like this. Well, Coney Island working too far out uh, in the perimeter, you know, so the shot clock has now winded down to only five seconds for them. Danger zone, Jerry unloads. It's a three-second violation. Evangelista thought that Jerry would uncork the first time up. And that's the reason why he went into the blue paint trying to get a possible offensive rebound. Now look at the defensive uh, assignments of the Coney Island All-Stars. We have Manny Victorino, a very tall player, who can guard people on the outside picking up their hell Mineses. On the other hand, we have uh, Capacio putting the cuffs there on Rudy Di Distrito, a player that they know plays well under pressure. Meanwhile, you know, the lineups on the floor are so potent for both sides, especially when you take a look at Swift. Victorino collects the first foul of the game. We're tied at 2 all. 10 minutes, 15 seconds remaining still in the opening salvo here tonight. Only one game, friends. And the game that counts. San Miguel waiting in the wings for an opponent. Jerry Coutinera is picking up Nelson Asaitono. And an attempted stuff there by Ria Lubin goes away. Wasted two points, yes, I said. Could have given them the early lead here. Two minutes going by us. Victorino with a spin. Meneses had nothing but teammates beside him there. Lead pass is taken away. Bodinera, Victorino. Trying to challenge Meneses. Decides to swing the ball around. Victorino, that's going to be yes. an illegal pick. So two personal fouls now for Manny Victorino, and he made a mistake in that play. He was posted up against Verhel Meneses. Not a very good defensive or strong player at the post, and Manny should have just backed him up slowly and taken him to the hoop. And for that reason, possession changing hands. Victorino has all of the fouls of the game so far. Both teams are feeling the pressure at this point. Oh, uh, yes. And the teams are playing straight up man-to-man -man defense. Nelson Asatano tries a long one. And Victorino has two defensive rebounds now in the match. There's Rosella starting off. One of the rare times that he starts off. Bangilista against Mineses. Gets gobbled up. He's taking it strong. Collects a foul in the process. In the early goings of this uh, first quarter, Van is showing a lot of poise underneath the basket, especially when he has to go up against those big players of the Mighty Mitis. It was Saldi Ria Lubin, Dr. J, who ended up with the foul, the first foul of Swift. Three minutes have gone by. Van has all the three points of the Coney Island All-Stars. They have a one-point lead. Well, like you mentioned, Seb, three minutes have gone by, and so far we have a 3-2 score only. On your screen, the numbers of Evangelista against the SWIM team in their head-to-head -head battle so far this year. It's 4-2, Coney Island in front at this juncture, 8.50 remaining. Asaitona above the key. 
But they're taking a lot of time in setting up their play. The shot clock down again to six. The street though is going to be called for a traveling violation. Eight and 40 to go. So far, referee Rivera has proven among the referees that he's the number one caller of the traveling violations, as Ronnie and I were pointing out earlier. He seems to like this rhythm uh, not being broken, huh? In other words, it's his specialty. I mean, he calls it on everybody, you know, whoever team yes, it is. Regardless, Capacho with a strong move. And Comdala advances by four. That's a very important player to me. Uh, in the past, even in championship games, especially against San Miguel, Glenn Capacho has delivered when it's needed. And you know he can score. So he must be given the opportunity by his team to score. Menezes gets another two points, and he has four for the Swift Mighty Meetings. Inside eight minutes now. Both teams trying to experiment with the patterns they went to in practice. And they're being slow about it, don't yes. they? are very deliberate with their half-court game at this point. A lot of screenings and a lot of movement. Victorino pops. Yes. yes. Get a good bounce. So the two guys that I feel should really contribute here have done so. Victorino has two points. Capacio has two. But a nice getaway here by the destroyer, Rudy Distrito. And Glenn Capacio ended up with a foul being called against him. His first. Tony Island has already gathered three fouls. Swift has been called for one. You know, you have to give it to this guy. He first entered the league, I think, in 1979 or 1980 with Chris Buck. Had to move back to the amateurs when nobody wanted to pick him up. Has been a traveler to Magnolia and all those teams before finally settling down here. And also with Hinebra, where he really shone, especially in the championship game, which he helped with. Meanwhile, a useless foul in the backcourt by Boybitz Victoria. The first on the rookie, the count reads 8-7, to 7-30 seven, seven to go in the opening quarter. Reporting to you from the Astrodome, Seb Sarmenta with Dr. J. Andy Howe. In our very special Vintage Sports Friday the 13th presentation. Domilista being asked to post up against Meneses. There is a double team. Capacho, roadblock in front of him. Victoria had a hand on it. Victoria... I think Jerry could have gone for the block, but I think he wanted to save the possibility of giving up a foul this yes. early. He doesn't want to get into foul trouble with Victoria about a step ahead of him. With that bucket, Swift moves ahead 98, 6.50 to go. Glenn Capacho, offensive foul. Two personal fouls now for Glenn Capacio, a total of 14 fouls so far for the Coney Island All-Stars. Swift has two. Frankie Lim will report for the first time, pulling out Olsen Rosella. Alvin Patrimonio also on deck. Manny Victorino will sit down. The captain moves in for the first time at the 6.44 mark of the opening quarter. Alvin has had all kinds of injuries, including having coming off uh, about with the fever, and then eventually people noticing that he had some problems with his knee, you know? Something he has not experienced uh, during the course of his career. Power move, producing nothing for Rhea Lubin. Chance now for Coney Island to grab the lead. They're down by a point. They're taking it hard, Evangelista. Cloud of forced into that ungainly situation by Boyfitz Victoria. Well, at this situation, they could have really called the hell ball because there's quite a while when yes. they were holding on to each other, but when he was able to pluck the ball out with his stronger grip, he, he did travel, and that's why the violation was called against him. Doesn't work from three-point distance. Six minutes, six seconds remaining. Fantastic lead pass. Jerry backing up. Shot in goal. They regain possession. Patrimonio, great cover by Jericho Dignera. There's biking downstairs. A big struggle uh, off the boards in that last play. No score so far for quite a while now with 5.40 left in the first quarter. The stretch doesn't work. Tony Island with another opportunity to surge ahead. Evangelista gets blocked. 
Abasho. No, sir. He stripped. It's taken away by Swift. Here goes Swift. Ivan Ilisa says, no way. Abasho stopped. Fires. Yes. Four points in the ball game now for Abasho. A one-point lead. In this kind of game, Sev, you're going to expect the referee, referees to allow you a little bit more banging. You just really have got to hold on to the ball after a defensive, offensive rebound. Absolutely a good point, Dr. J. We find Coney Island advancing now by a point, 10-9, with five minutes remaining in the first quarter. <laughs> Triple. Swift trying to use that as a weapon. It has been a dud so far. Well, it is one of their strongest weapons, but at the moment, just a little bit too early to use it. An offensive foul. Call the patrimonio. The mighty Didis have just decided to take a timeout. And that's the foul by patrimonio. Knockout game. The winner here advances to meet San Miguel. San Miguel gaining a, a, at least a week's rest by virtue of the quotient that gave them the advantage of going into the finals. 10-9 is the count here. 440 remaining in the first. The Coney Island All-Stars are ready in the penalty situation. Nice pass there. And Ria Lupin finally gets his first two points of the ball game after popping an easy dunk shot and a drive underneath the basket. Patrimonio reclaims the lead for Coney Island. They're really putting the defense on Albin, so he knew he had to take an outside shot as shown in that last play. 12-11, 4-0-3 to go. Tono asking for some movement. Becomes an isolation now. Can't shake off Jerry. Jerry like a rock there. You see, he really has no advantage on a one-on-one -on -one against Jerry. Jerry is wide enough and knows his movements very well as we take a look at Ron Jacobs, who's seated to the right of us. Uh, he is a consultant and a, of the coaching staff of the Beermen, and obviously he can help as far as, you know, digressing, studying the other team's plays, coming up with his own ideas on what to do. And I'm sure he's with interest there looking on who are they going to play. You know? Absolutely. Patrimonio. Nothing off that try. 3 and 36 to go. Distrito starts his power drive. Produces nothing. Victoria, triple B. Yes. yes. That's a big one there for the rookie because it will certainly improve his confidence now that he can hit a three-point shot in such a crucial ball game. Victoria has improved this average here in the semifinals. Patrimonio with a spin. Just to go back to Victoria. He was averaging below 10 points in the elimination round. Jocked it up to 14.6 in the semifinal round. Well, his playing minutes must have, lip, uh, must have really gone up by lips and bounds, especially with the injury to Solis yes. and the confidence that uh, Yang Giao has found in this young guy. He takes another three-point attempt. This one's way off the mark. Coney Island really hasn't run that much in this uh, first quarter of play. Currently, the score is tied at 14. The second deadlock, Patrimonio goes to work. That shot didn't work, however. Left-handed hook shot. Not really his shot, no? Not exactly his cup of tea at this. Has not really honed that shot. Vanessa is off the window, checking that off the back uh, rim. And there's a rescue job by Saudi Lubin. Coney Island All-Stars must do a better job at boxing out and not allow second chance points for the uh, Swift. Mighty Mitis who have now taken a two-point lead with two minutes left. We see Al Solis and Ravenna being sent to the scorer's bench. Here's Capasio. Evangelista. Downstairs to the Rock. Well, they're very solid in trying to go to the low post as long as they can get some movement so that the double team won't come against either Jerry or Alvin. And they've been successful with that in several plays now. Rhea yeah, Lubit working on the outside. The, the game is currently tied. As I thought of, the bull at work. Well, a study in one-on-one -on -one right now. Not too much double teaming, and we see individual talent shining right now. 
Like in that last play where Aceitona had a gentle hook. Enough to give Swift the two-point advantage. Inside to the captain. Great play. That one did go. Jerry with a tip in. No, Aceitona touching it last. And we will have some changes. We'll tell you all about them when we return after this timeout by Coney Island. Dr. J was beginning to talk about the tradition of Coney Island of having made the all Filipino finals every time uh, since they joined the league way back in 1988. The time they got it and became champion of the all Filipino was in 1991. A 3-2 victory against this very same franchise with Eli Capacho as their coach at that That's time. That's right. And this franchise was, uh, of Swift was known as Sarsi. The very first trip to the finals. Good call by referee Dragon. He did travel as he tried to take Nelson Asaitono to the hoop. 57.3 seconds left. Yes, and I remember that finals, Dr. J. Swift even led 2 to nothing in the early going. Then later on in the next year, 1992, they lost to San Miguel, that's Coney Island, and then they won against San Miguel last year. 4-2. Four to, two. Four to two. They also lost against the Presto team in 1990, I think, uh, not going the full route of seven games. No, Alan Kaidik was a member of that Presto team at exactly. that time, together with guys like Manny Victorino. On the floor for the first time, we have Al Solis, Ferdinand Ravenna, Villamin is also there, four of the shot clock, Solis, yes! Solis still has that range and a big clenched fist because that is certainly going to spell a lot of problems for the defense of the All-Stars who have began to sack down a lot. Solis missing five of the eight games of Swift in the semifinals. And the White Shirts are running with 16 seconds left. Menezes hang time. And Swift is in front, 23-16. A big five to nothing explosion there off the timeout gives them a seven point lead and a good foul by Benjamin because they are not in the penalty. First on Benjamin, the third on Swift, and he's doing his homework. Well, that's what you're paid for. You know, come around, you know, he's got to watch, he's got to take notes of both teams because he has really no idea who's going to win this match. And that ends the first quarter. I think Norman Black, Ron Jacobs, they've seen enough, but there's still three quarters to go. We'll be back. For the second quarter of action, 23-16 is the score where we take off from. Shot clock is down to seven. Uh, again, Coney Island starting off very low. Traveling violation again called on Frankie Lim as he tried to post up uh, Solis in that last play. Well, this is the familiar backcourt team of uh, the Swift Mighty Meaties, Al Solis and Rudy Distrito. Both of them are good gunners from the outside. Both of them can penetrate well. Here's Distrito. By the way, and on the floor for the first time for Coney Island, we have Abuda. Abuda was picked up by this team last year, but uh, suffered an injury in the first quarter. Has never really shown but now given an opportunity to do so. I think he even went to the States to, uh, for the operation. And with three seconds remaining on the shot clock, that piece of action drew a foul. See, the reason why he was put in there was trying to put the cuffs on Menezes, but Menezes just too quick and too crafty for Abuda's kind of defense, and Berhel will go to the free throw line. Abuda committing his first, and now we we talked about Coney Island and their history here in the Old Filipino. How about Swift? Well, we talked about the fact that they were a finalist in 1991. In the last two years, they have ended up as finisher of third place. Well, it is also payback time on their part. You know, they're feeling that they could have had a chance of being the champions last year. But in three games, very close games, That's number correct. blocks, including one overtime. The Coney Island All-Stars took them out of the fight. Yeah. And eventually Coney Island went on to, to win, win a championship, championship. So to them, you know, they really played well. Patrimonio and took on four of them there. But this is the patented move of Albi Patrimonio that has endeared him to the fans of basketball and the PBA. You know, his strength and his ability to score underneath. Good steal here. But again, the break for the All-Stars, very, very slow. Albi's trying to speed it up a little bit. Good play. William in with his second personal foul. 
Victoria reports back in, pulling out Rudy Distrito. I think by this time, I think the guards of Street are more or less accustomed to this rotation. Such a, yes, this rotation. rotation. Better word, rotation. But you see, Seb, they're so big a threat because all of the three of them are all good three-point shooters. All of them can shoot from long range. So you can just imagine that you continuously have to keep an eye on their two guards on the outside. If the ball gets back there, they can burn you with those long toms. As we see Olsen Rosella coming in for Evangelista. Yes. No, it's Abuda. Abuda, I'm sorry. He changed to Abuda. Abuda, yes. So, Chot Reyes, who you saw earlier, going to his two-point guards. At the same time, he feels that Rosella can match up well with... Uh, Victoria. Victoria, rather than with the Distrito, who will just use his power against Rasella. The second period, friends, is down to 10 minutes and 30 seconds. It's a five-point Swift lead, 25 to 20. Our first quarter ended with Swift in front by 7, 23, 16. And now a traveling call. Against Yoye Villamin, which nullified the jumper. Well, you, Yoye should realize that he is no longer the offensive threat that he was before. And with Alden on top of him, he really must use himself more as a bait, as a decoy player, as a guy who's providing screens. We have another holding foul called on Villamin, I think. And Villamin picks up foul number three. Saldiria Lubit, who started off, pulls out Nelson Asaitona in the Swift roster. The second quarter is left with 10 minutes and 13 seconds. Knockout game, winner here advances to meet the San Miguel Beerman. One game only. <laughs> One night only. One chance only. <laughs> Godinera can't get it to go in, had a good line. Well, so far, Menezes is the only player that has not been replaced from the original starting five unit of the uh, Swift Mighty Meaty is a bad bounce pass there by Rio Lubin. Rosella trying to speed up things, but nobody running with him from his teammates. This, thus enabling Swift to come down just as quickly. That's right. That didn't work. 9.36 to go. Five points Swift lead. Offense going sour for both teams now. Three Oops, traveling. That's traveling. Yes. <laughs> And you're absolutely right about that, uh, referee Rivera, huh? That's right. I think he must have called. Not that he just loves to call. It happens in front of him. Coney <laughs> Island deliberately slowing down their game, trying to lower the score in this match, and then being deliberate about getting their two points. Mount Podinera has just cut down the lead to three. A timeout by Genya. A pleasant evening to all of you. Magandang gabi, Bayan, Filipinas, for joining us tonight at this knockout game. We're in the second quarter, and it currently stands at 25 to 22 in favor of Swift. We are stepping out of a huddle called by Swift. Well, their lead had been cut down from 7 to 3 due to turnovers and ineffectivity in their half-court game. We have a foul called on Victoria, offensive foul, his second personal foul. Now three team fouls called against Swift, one against Coney Island. So far in the quarter, Coney Island has outscored Swift 6-2. to two. That's right, and that's why they have cut down that seven-point lead to three. They have possession, and we could have even the equalizer on this play. Huh? Should on they a three decide play. to take an ICBM? Patrimonio is posting up. And a complete turnaround as far as the team fouls in this quarter, all of a sudden, it is now Swift with 14 fouls compared to one for Coney Island. And Boybitz Victoria picks up his third personal foul. And thus, Leroy Alvarillo got the eye of Yang Ya to please step in before any more fouls get called on the rookie. Well, a very nice pickup last year was Terroy Albarillo because uh, he just came in and blended with the team immediately. Oh, offensive foul! I, I am just a surprise. Let's, Let's take see. a look if he used that left hand to ward off. Even lost his balance here as uh, Albarillo ran side by side with him. A lot of pressure being applied here. Solis getting Frank Lim up into the air. 
And so the shooters, the gunners, finally meet, huh? <laughs> both long-range shooters, both also pretty good defensive players. I'll meet you at high noon, he says. And this is high noon tonight. Pushing foul. Called on Ravenna. Ravenna gets his first personal foul. A lot of people flocking in to the Coneta Astrodome. I would say we have a crowd of about six to seven thousand right now here. Yes. Joining our good friends, joining us wherever this coverage may be reaching them in our great country. Three point lead by Swift. 7.56 to go. Alvarillo thought about pulling the trigger. Ended up losing the basketball to Rasella. And we'll have a loose ball foul called on Alvarillo. In his earnest desire to regain possession, ended up committing that foul is first. Let's count the team fouls, friends. Swift has five compared to the three of Coney Island. Meneses getting his first rest of the game, uh, Seb. And by your statement, that means that the Swift Mighty Midis will be in penalty from now on. With yes. still 7 minutes and 45 seconds left here in the second quarter. Quite a lot of time remaining, yes. Let's see if Coney Island takes advantage of that by driving. Frankie, one of the spots he likes, but he's offline. There's a slippery spot just at the left water court area. I've been a little bit frustrated because as he went for the loose ball, he tripped over the foot of somebody who was also going for that scramble. You know? Like you, you saw that in that play. I think he stepped, almost stepped on the foot of Nelson Asaitano there. That's why he fell to the floor. Seven twenty-two to go. Bounce over now to Distrito. He's looking for a teammate. Solis unprepared to receive the pass. Jerry Codignera. Oh! Ravenna. Well, that's one time when you're really happy because you made such a bad mistake that you had a trailer who happened to be your teammate, and Ravenna made up for that miss possible missed dunk shot by Jerry Coutinera who did not handle the ball well in that last play. And it Oops! Yes, Ravenna with a near steal. Oops! And Ravenna seems to be hurt as Nelson Asaitano banged him from behind. Coney Island really hoping for a foul to be called there and Ravenna seems to be hurt just below the knee. And I think I saw his head hit the floor as well. See here, Yes, the referee could have called a foul there because easily Rabena was at the right position to pick up the ball. Nelson's trying to get it from behind, banks into him. Rabena's there to get away. Nelson practically holding on to him. No, no fouls were called. Ball was given to the Swift Mighty Meetings. And that is exactly the bone of the contention being made now by Chuck Reyes. Twenty-five to twenty-four. Swift up by one. Six fifty remaining. Ravenna is assisted by the cornerman of Coney Island. He seems to be limping, and uh, we don't know if that injury will take him out of the ball game permanently today. No, but uh, Glenn Capasio has come back into the ball game to replace him. Asaitono from afar, no connection. And that is not the best shot for this guy who plays well on the inside, to take a three-point shot and have really nobody helping him out in the offensive rebounding. Alvin, Frankie, back to Alvin. Jerry on low. Yes. Low. And 25, 26, 25 now, Seb, a one-point lead for Coney Island in a very low-scoring match here. And now a successful 10 to nothing explosion by Coney Island. Swift has been limited to just two points so far in the quarter. Rasella ended up climbing the railing there. Six minutes, seven seconds remaining. Coney Island has already grabbed the lead. Six on the shot clock. Nice get away there, but the missed layup again by Asaitono. Patrimonio 
Difficult catch. Glenn taking it hard. Offensive foul on Patrimonio. Yes, the second. Let's take a look at this. Uh, Patrimonio and Rio Luvit both trying to get position. And Verel Meneses has come back in for Al Solis. That, by the way, Seb, is the 14th foul for Coney Island. Mighty Mitis are in penalty. Towards the end of the first quarter, it appeared that the Coney Island Ice Cream Stars were being engulfed by the pressure. At this juncture, quite clear that the shoe is on the other foot, with Swift feeling a bit of the tension of the ball game. I, I really feel at this point, Coney Island has a strategy. They don't want to rush the game as much as possible because they want to use their defense to try to lower down the score of the mighty Swift scoring machine. And their defense has helped them in this quarter. Jerry! Make no mistake about that this time on the part of Jerry Codinera. And the mighty Minis will take a timeout. Five and 19 remaining. Coney Island is in front by three, 28 to 25. We are a little bit. Jerry Cordinera beginning to assert himself in this quarter. Well, it's very easy to rebound from the weak side, and because it's the Asaitono uh, uh, just right behind Jerry in those last plays. No? Masala making a contribution, and now Chot Reyes going quite big here with Manny Victorino being inserted into the lineup. Yes, that is a very powerful offensive and defensive forward lineup that he has on the floor. Swift Mighty Mitis have been nailed to 25 points. Two timeouts already called by Yang Giao in this quarter. And a finally a long one here by Meneses, but just a two-point shot. Only the second field goal of Swift, Swift in this quarter. They have scored only four points. The captain has Ria Lubit as a waltzing partner. Victorino popping out, asking for it. Alvin moves in. This shot to Codinera. And there's going to be a pushing foul on Ria Lubit against Manny Victorino. You see, with that lineup that you just mentioned, Seth, when Alvin drove in, he had the option of Jerry to drop off. At the same time, Manny knows they're going to take the shot, so he comes in for the possible offensive rebound. Three big men right there in their forward lineup. Very hard to contend with. Manny Victorino. Ten years ago, Manny Victorino was the PBA's most improved player. He began his career in 1981. You know, in that year, he was the most improved player. Great taste. The team he was with at that time won two titles, and he even made it to the mythical first team in that year. That's right. It's been a struggle for him lately because of the fact that he's playing with such talented men, big men uh, on that team. But he has the experience. He has won many championships, and he's still, although at 35, he's still got a lot of legs. No, but he's got to make free throws, which was his problem yes. last year with Ginebra. Yes, absolutely. Career average of 18.7 points and 11 rebounds. That's Those are big numbers. Meanwhile, the turnaround works. Finally getting Asaitono to the low post instead of letting him play up high. And the mighty Mitis have run off a 4 to nothing run here to cut the lead down to 1. The clock reads 3.44. Eric Reyes, by the way, is on the floor replacing Saldi Ria Lupin. And he's on top of Alvin Patrimonio. Jerry with a dish off. Glenn Deep yes. under the sea. Anytime you get a big game from Glenn Capacho, you're in business. And the other team is in trouble. Yes. Conversely. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> like a theorem, huh? Yes. <laughs> Scramble! And winning out on the ice cream stars. Look at Glenn Capacho. Look at his eyes. If only eyes could kill, if only looks could kill. Ooh, ah, but that's yes. unintentional as he was really trying to gain a clear advantage. He ended up elbowing Albarillo. That's right. And that's a good call. There are many, there were some questionable calls in the beginning, but I think that was a good call. Capacho did not want that ball to be taken away from him, and he did not really know what to do with it at that point, so he put out that elbow. Three minutes to go in the first half. Of course, when we hit the second half, 
Our motor line brake fluid gas brake will be presented to you. Some big misses by the mighty Medes in the second quarter. Well, they were not prepared for that defense of the All-Stars. The All-Stars trap. And then all of a sudden, you see Jerry, who is the last man on defense, come in to help out. So they were not really prepared for that defense of the All-Stars. And Coney Island Ice Cream Stars, who are ahead 32 to 29, take a timeout with 2.48 to go. When we get to lemon time, we're going to have our Nutrivim halftime report. A loaded edition, no doubt. Ronnie Nathaniels will chat with the reigning Miss Universe Puerto Rico's Miss Dianara Torres. Ang sarap ng intro sa kanya ni Ed Pixon ng isang gabi kasama si Yang Yao. And it's a conversation with the Queen and we shall try to dissect the first half of this knockout match in the second portion of the Nutrivim halftime report. Turnover story on your screen. And space. that has hurt the Swift Mighty Mitis in the second quarter. Ten turnovers, ten opportunities that you could have shot, it did not come. They tried a backdoor play there for Meneses. And uh, there was a loose ball foul called on Victorino. Since they are in the penalty, Meneses will go to the free throw line. Victorino with his third personal foul. Here's Meneses, all set for a pair of charities. Meneses currently in double digits. He has 10. Well, so far in this quarter, prior to these free throws, Mighty Mitis have only scored six points while allowing the other team, the All-Stars, to score 18 points. That's the seven point. Yang Giao, a little bit apprehensive at this second quarter, the way his team played. And the turnovers really held them, you know. Yes. Ten turnovers, the quarter is not over yet. So you lose the opportunity to shoot, to get, even take an attempt. Meneses has also been doing well from the field, four of five. 34-31, Coney Island is still in front, though. Frankie Lim downstairs to the captain. Now the double team. Frankie Lim free for a triple B. Evangelista gets clobbered inside. Here's Boybitz, Victoria. And that is the hardest matchup for all stars. They have to guard Meneses with Evangelista. And that is, and he cannot do it, you know. What a second quarter Verhelas had. Eight of his 14 points now unfolding here. Single-handedly trying to keep the Swift Mighty Mitis in the ball game. Oh, that's traveling. That is traveling. A minute and 40 seconds remaining. 34 to 33. Coney Island still up. But here's a chance for Swift to take the lead. It's Victoria against Rosella. That you, has been a familiar matchup here. You have noticed a change in the uh, formation of the offensive game of the Swift Mighty Mitis, and that's why they're able to get shots like this now. They don't go straight to the low post one and one. They have screens, as what Meneses did coming from the weak side, and then he realizes that if there's a double team, somebody's going to be free, and they know exactly who it is. Which has happened in the last two sequences for them, which have been both productive. productive. And they are now in front, Dr. Jace. 35-34, a minute and three seconds. Patrimonio attracts the familiar double team. Went up with nothing. And with Rhea Lubitz sitting on the bench, you know, Swift has shown a lot of quickness on their defense. That's a very tight pass. That's another turnover that was unnecessary. Rossella, what a pass! Oh, yes, sir. And with 43 seconds left in the second quarter, the Ice All-Stars have not taken another one-point lead. Seesaw battle, nip and tuck affair, name it what you want. This is a battle royale here at the Astrodome. That is an offensive foul, if they are to be consistent. As you saw, that since he faked out, Jerry did not bite. He put that shoulder on Jerry Codinera. And Jerry really guards Nelson well, especially if he's going to try to score underneath the basket. Jerry Cordinella, the man mountain, did not budge. How do you move a mountain? <laughs> <laughs> Only 15 seconds left. Difference of about three seconds, game clock and shot clock. Rosella with a great ball fake. Had everything except the shot. Evangelista with an arm foul. This will give Swift a chance to shoot 
from the line. Chodre is a little bit unhappy with the move of Rasella. They did not use the clock. Instead, they allowed the opponents to get another crack, and that would be from the free throw line to try to chip at their lead. He was telling Rosella, too much time, too early for you to try to go in. And subsequently, they will be under time pressure, only 5.8 seconds to have hopefully the last say. As we take a look at the destroyer, currently docked. It's 36 all. And how close can you get with 5.8 seconds left here in the second quarter? As I thought of 50% from the field in the game. Now they've got to go and release that shot. Marcella. you got to throw that up. Matrimonio. No more time. Break. We had Meneses for Swift with a total of 14 points. Aceitono hitting six of his eight points in the second quarter. On the other hand, for Coney Island, it has been the man mountain, Jerry Codiniera, with 10 points. Patrimonio has added eight. Ravenna, before he had that injury, had uh, four points. And look at this, Bong Ravenna, all set to join. Probably, I have it on good word from our producer that he will be joining the team on the floor. Well, right now he has a severe sprain. They don't know if it's going to be uh, termed later on or classified as a fracture. So that will be known after he has undergone some tests, probably. Okay. And the route there might be towards the hospital already. Well, we find out. Anyway, we have Naron seeing action for the very first time here uh, for the Coney Island All-Stars. And as usual, he plays that point forward position. Top <laughs> yes. of the key there. Try to set the play that area seven seconds on the shot clock too much time holding the ball they are in trouble now and Alvin has to shoot a long one it goes in with time pressure on him the captain delivered the goods Coney Island is in front 38 to 37 Patrimonio already in double digit land with 10 Asaitona going to work his shot refuses to roll in and a foul from the rear by Ria Lubit See, Jerry seems to be always on top of the shot of Nelson Asaitono. He's forcing him to shoot fadeaway shots, not those movements that he usually makes underneath the basket because Jerry isn't biting to the first fake that Nelson throws up against a defensive player. One point lead for Coney Island All-Stars. We are at the start of the third quarter. Still in the first minute. Naron kept busy by Distrito. Here's Victorino has been in and out of this ball game. Patrimonio, two in a row. Well, you call him the captain, and we also know the, the legendary figure, Captain Courageous. Uh, I've been playing hurt, but he's such a potent uh, weapon. And if he continues to play that way, he's going to inspire the younger players on that squad. Yes, absolutely. Leading by example. Victorino picking up Meneses. Victorino, remember, has three fouls. Meneses. Goes all the way in and got a foul. It's on Victorino. That'll be four. Well, at that stage, Victorino should have just let him go. Having been beaten to the baseline, he sees no help coming. That's why he goes up against Meneses, who just knows what to do by going under the basket and using the glass in that play. Verhel really shining here uh, in this very important knockout game. Six of seven from the field, five of five from the free throw line. We have the count at 40 all, Seb, with a minute and a half gone by in the third quarter. This is only the fourth standoff. Last time we were tied was at 16. Patrimonio digs deep inside, ended up collecting a foul. Ria Lubit is the guilty party. He ends up with his fourth personal foul. Uh, three trips down, they have gone to Patrimonio. And they have been successful on two of them. And he will uh, get another opportunity to score, save from the free throw line. No problem about the first one. Patrimonio, as you mentioned, struggling in the semifinal round. Lowest production he had was against Santa Lucia, wherein he had only eight points. But see, because his minutes went down due to his injury and the fact that he had just come from a bout with the flu. No? So yes. those things have really hurt him, but the three-day rest is obviously doing him some good now in this ballgame. And he already has collected 14 across his name. 
Coney Island is run by two. A foul in the box. Uh, Evangelista gets number two. Evangelista had come in for Victorino. He has been assigned again to Meneses, and Meneses has been continuously attacking him by moving, moving, constant, constantly moving. Each side has been called for two team fouls. A, a total of two minutes going by us here. Solis with an attempt. No siree. Here's Frankie Lin taking care of the rebound. The forward pitch to Naron. The cut by Codiniera. It is batted away. It will stay on the turf of the Coney Island Ice Cream Stars. Frankie Lim will do the inbounds for the All-Stars. They have 19 seconds on their shot clock. 9.53 left in the second quarter. Codiniera. Backpedaling against Asaitono. No problem. Asaitono gives him too much space going into the inside. And he has been able to make fadeaway shots, no? Yes, on the other hand. Codiniera already with 12 in the encounter. That is a foul on Patrimonio, I think. Who came out to help Frankie Lim after the switch. Frankie Lim had a big mismatch on his hands with Nelson Asaitono there. And there was a foul on Albin. Which ends up as his third personal foul. The third on Coney Island as a group. Nine and a half remaining. Meneses unable to catch it. Evangelista with a heist. Naron fakes, releases, gets it. Any two points is going to help any team here. And Naron giving two points there on a fast break attempt. Again by the Coney Island All-Stars as they now take their biggest lead of the ball game, A six-point lead. Naron with a move reminiscent of his brilliance in 1989 when he was a member of the national youth team. Here's Solis into traffic. Offensive foul will be called against Solis. Swift not doing a very good job at attacking the defense. Look at how many blue shirts are there in that area. One, two, three, four. Try to go in. Albin willing to take the charge. And Solis picks up an offensive foul. Both teams, three team fouls so far here. Eight minutes, 55 seconds to go. Still in the third quarter. Downstairs we go to the captain. Outside to Franklin. Not this time around. It's in the hands of the mighty Minis, Asaitono. Up, up, whoa! Oh, somebody, somebody pushed him from yes. underneath, and the referees let that go. He was pushed from underneath. Daron can't nail it. And One more time around, let's see. Asaitono brushes aside. Daron. And, and he got him in the back. eye, too. I wonder. This is the first miss, the first attempt, to be specific. Two views, two angles. And this was no, the this last one. The second one, rather. This time he wasn't going to go up into the air. He was going to fake. And Naron did a right foul in holding him down, but also got him in the eye. No? So two free throws here for Nelson Asaitono as Swift is still down by six. Asaitono. Three of three from the 4.5 meter strike tonight. Asaitona's biggest game in the semifinals was in their win against Alaska Milk. He had 32 points. In the last game between these two sides, he had 17 in that 92 84 victory of Swift against Coney Island. Finally getting the two points the hard way from the 4.5 meter line, but putting a stop to the run of the All Stars. All-Stars, Coney Island still on top by four. With eight minutes and 14 seconds to go. Victoria ending up with his fourth personal foul. And except for a three-point shot that he threw somewhere there in the first or second quarter, he really hasn't gotten going. No? Not much mileage out of the rookie here tonight. This is a guy who has also hurt them by not playing uh, well from the outside. That's Frankie Lim. We have Billamin called for his fourth personal foul on a loose ball foul on the weak side. And now we have three gentlemen with four personal fouls on the Swift roster. They are Victoria with four, Billamin with four, as well as Mineses with four. Eight and ten to go. Four point Coney Island advantage. Kane 
while. There's Naron losing it at the baseline. I'd like to correct myself. It's actually Rhea Lubit who has four personal fouls. That's why he was taken out after that last foul he gave up against Patrimonio in this quarter. Post play again here, except for Ferrell Meneses, the double team. Oh, very tight pass. You don't throw that kind of pass. Too much traffic there. And you're too far away from the basket to make a good pass that way. He's open. Yes. And the fans of the Coney Island All-Stars go wild here. 48-42, six-point lead now for them. We are in the third quarter. Guadinera, 14 points, eight rebounds. Victoria, Victoria. ice cold shooting. Franklin barely made it. Jerry hit one there earlier, and they decide to swing it around. I'm very surprised that uh, Swift does not put a double-teaming defense on Naron, and they let Coney Island set up their half-court game this way. Maybe they'll discuss this in this timeout. They have just called. It is Coney Island in front by eight. Jerry Codinera, who has hit 20 points or more in five of the eight semifinal games of Coney Island, has exploded once more, and... Somehow, Patrimonio isn't far behind whenever he explodes. Well, they are the reasons why their team has gone so far in this conference, despite having a lot of rookies and new players on that squad. You remember the times of Philip Cesar and, let's say, a Gidaben or a Fernandez and Abbey King. That's why those two teams control the PBA too much. Excellent their big point. men are yes. so good, you know. Solis is in the clear. And if those oh. three-point shots don't fall, Swift is in a lot of trouble in this ball game because Coney Island is shutting them off from the blue paint. 6.34 remaining in the third. Naron. Solis takes care of the rebound. Here's Victoria. Meneses. Clear out for Vergel. There's the double. The pass to Boybitz. On the way, but there was a foul. A bump foul called on Patrimonio. That'll be number four now on him. So that's going to hurt their team as he has to be replaced. We're only in the third quarter with uh, over half a quarter to go. And quickly off the bench uh, comes Manny Victorino. And Patrimonio leaves you for the time being after netting 14 points and snaring four rebounds. Victoria going to the free throw line. Both teams have now hit five team fouls apiece. Victoria was also in the act of shooting in that play. That's why he is going to the free throw line. Averages against Coney Island, but it's not evident there tonight. And Richard Merck and Reno Salazar in town, and that's Richard saying PBA Hanep in so many words. Uh, he has always been uh, coming to the PBA uh, ever since, even when we were at the Ultra. We have uh, Bognot seeing action for the first time, replacing Nelson Asaitono. We have uh, Ravenna also being shown on your screens, the gutsy guy. Talk about uh, x-rays later on. Let me watch the game first. Let me cheer for the team. At least I can cheer, you know. Let me try to do a Willis Reed here. Of course, Willis Reed in the 1970 uh, game yes. in the NBA. Meanwhile, Victorino has a contribution. You see, Victorino really is an offensive type of big player, but with the All-Stars, he had to adjust his kind of game. But given the goal signal, you know, the guy can score. Double team. Let Bognot shoot from the outside. Pick up the rebound. All-Stars really have their game plan going here in the third quarter. Just one trip every time. And always Cody. slow down, oh, partner. Swift, sorry. Always slow down. Yes. Just, unless you get a clear fast break, slow down. Use the clock. The element of control, huh? Night. An offensive foul, however, called against. Uh, his third personal foul, just for the sake of our very, some of the very young members of our audience. I know this happened 24 years ago, but Willis Reed, who was then the captain of the New York Knicks, was injured, didn't play in the sixth game, came out in the seventh game to a thunderous applause at the Madison Square Garden, just enough, and he even played. He yes, scored four, four points. points. See, but that was all that he could help. But yes. the emotion really lifted up the rest of the team and the crowd, and they won the championship that year. Of course, it helps if you have a yes. Walt Frazier, Dave DeBusher, Bill, Bill Bradley. Bradley. 
Big Barnett. We have a foul called on Jerry Codinera on that drive by Benjamin. They are in the penalty. Yoya to the free throw line. 52 to 44 is the current score. Rasella reports back in. Maron, he did his job. Yes, and uh, he gave them minutes, which was very important. He also caused some uh, match up problems. Although Solis is not a bad defender, uh, Naron certainly is much bigger, and if he gets underneath the basket, there, have, there would be problems. Swift, per, missing from the free throw line. And who is this? An interesting face, and it belongs to Gladys Duenas. I understand she is Miss UST. So she might be cheering for guys like uh, Ray Evangelista, who comes from that. Villamin missing both free throws, very important free throws, now that they are down by eight. You come from UST? I'm just talking to Willie here. I know my friend Willie Cabagas, the sports I think also sports Rudy editor. Navarro. Yes. The editor of Tempo. Jerry continues to have a hot hand. And like I said, he's the best player on that squad right now. We're looking for his first ever MVP with that kind of performance. His biggest games have in fact come against this team 25 points in the first meeting in the semifinals 23 in the last one there is no style right now or you could say science in the game of swift it's who's free take the shot three-point shot whatever you know wherever love takes me and even the rebounding is not synchronized and that's why the all-stars have a 10-point lead have total control of this ball game here in the third quarter They'll use the clock again. Even though they're lead, if they have a big lead, they have the momentum, they have been using and milking the clock well. They are controlling the mood and the momentum. Jerry shoots on the way down, shot it with a lot of time pressure. In fact, the clock was down to two seconds. Meanwhile, we have Eric Reyes checking in for Benjamin. The clock reads 3.46 to go in the third, a 10-point Coney Island advantage. Frankie Lim is now being replaced by Capacio. Frankie Lim unable to hit his three-point shots. All of a sudden, gun shy to even do so. You know, when you start missing that in the beginning, you know, even when you're free, you're beginning to think, maybe I shouldn't take it. Do yes. it later on, you know. And that's why he's been taken out. The lead is 10. Shot clock is down to 10. Asaitono, nothing. Boybits, Distrito. <laughs> Hold it. Well, Rosella with a foul there that will send Victoria a pretty good free throw shooter to the 4.5 meter line. Not the kind of defense that they want to, a defensive foul that they want to give up because the guy was not yet in shooting position. But letting him go to the free throw line will hurt your defense. No? Tonight, seven points so far. Had a three point shot. Like I said, he's a pretty good free throw shooter and that's where he wants to go. Scored 20 when they lost to Coney Island the first time in the semis. When they won, he scored 12. Biggest game, as we mentioned, was that 26-pointer against Alaska Mill, which nine, they won. Nine points in the ball game now for him. Eight-point lead for the All-Stars. Three minutes and 15 seconds left, third quarter of play. Rasella, escape act. Yes! <laughs> and Rasella with a very nice spin move. About 25 feet away from the basket, which left Victoria with his bang out. Keep the dust or whatever is left. Asaitona, three of nine from the field. Victoria traveled. Under time pressure again, forced to make good decisions. They were not able to do so. And Coney Island takes a timeout. They're in front by 10 with 2.45 to play. Welcoming you back to our Friday night special. Coney Island against Swift for the right to meet San Miguel in the finals of the all Filipino starting Sunday. Two and a half to go. Long time doesn't work. Rebound in the hands of Asaitono. And the white shirts have not really been able to run in this ball game. That is the kind of game that they like to play so much. They're not able to do so. Good pass there. But no success on that shot by Eric Reyes. Just to bring back to the point about the rebounding, so much input in the hands of 
the ice cream stirs. Well, you see, they don't use Jerry to double team, you know. Unless you attack the guy that Jerry is guarding, he's going to block down those defensive rebounds if you take the shot from the outside. Meanwhile, misses on both ends. But they get already with a collection of nine rebounds, a minute 50 to go. And a blocking foul. It's going to be called against Capacho, so Rudy Distrito will go to the free throw line. Capacho also picking up his fourth personal foul. Glenn Capacho had a significant contribution of six points in the first half of play. And the destroyer will be on your screens after we check out on who Real Lubit will change. It's Reyes. Distrito, not exactly the hottest of nights from the field, only one of six. Well, Yengia right now is going to the big guns that have won him six of their last seven games in the semifinals. Remember, Solis was hurt. So he's coming off non-playing practices, you know, actually he hasn't really played in active competition. So these are the guys that were really responsible for them. He knows that he cannot wait for the fourth quarter to make the run. He's got to do it here. Here's the street over improved his average. In the semi-final round, the protagonists, our love triangle, if you would want it. He's waiting for somebody to dance with. I want to dance with somebody. He doesn't, he isn't picky, though. Uh, I he, see he, that way. he has no right to be picky. And <laughs> uh, that's going to be an offensive foul there called on Evangelista. Like I said, it's not his choice. He can hope for somebody to play against, but he really doesn't have a choice. It's not up to him. Meanwhile, that offensive foul against Evangelista resulted in his fourth personal foul. So three of those four guys playing on the floor there for the Coney Island All-Stars have four fouls there. A minute and a half remaining. A double team with that side. Good catch. Finally, a clear shot. Finally, a four to nothing run for them as they cut down that big 10-point lead to six right now. Minute and 16 left. Plenty of them to them. Swift's trying to improve its defense now, its coordination. Well, it's the oh, one that there it is them. again. It's the one that brought them here. However, they throw it away. Rasella with two fakes. Back to Rasella. He'll take it. No. That hurt. That jumper could have really cut off that momentum of Swift. Capacho knocking it away. Real, real Lubit as we take a look at some of the uh, ladies here who are watching this ball game and talking of beautiful faces and you'll see a lot of them later on tonight at 10 30 on new vision 9 it's called faces of the universe a beautiful experience and i think big part of that will be the party beauty and brawn at faces which we were talking about two weeks ago well coney island has thrown this kind of defense the whole night for the first time they got called here in the third quarter, and for the first time, they get caught with an illegal defense, which is a warning call against their team right now. Keeping a tab on the offensive fouls of the game so far, Coney has been charged with eight, Swift with four. Down to the last 35 seconds of the third canto of this knockout match. Menezes, straight but not true. Good pass! They couldn't get it to go! And that, yes, go ahead, please. And it resulted in a loose ball foul for Nelson Asaitono. A great pass here to Ria Lubit, who missed underneath the basket. And that really hurt them, because that was two points that could have cut down the lead to four. Asaitono picks up a foul, and Jerry will go to the free throw line. And the reaction of Ria Lubit, illustrating what Dr. J just mentioned. Six-point lead by the Ice Cream Stars of Coney Island. Abuda, who made a brief appearance in the first half, reports in once more. Solis comes in for Boybit's Victoria. Who leaves with four personal fouls. Well, two free throws here for uh, Evangelista who was uh, the one uh, pushed away by Nelson Asaitono in that rebound play. He misses the first. These are pressure moments for a rookie, you know. Not bad. Not a bad line against Swift. And Coney Island manages to... Carve out a seven-point lead with 20 seconds remaining in the third. 
Well, I don't think Swift is going to rush this offensive play, but that's a nice pass, and he's committed, and a traveling violation called on Rio Lubin. They did set up for a last shot. They attacked too early, came up again with a turnover, and you know Coney Island is going to use this 12.5 seconds. Because Rosella is not going to make the same mistake he did in the second quarter when he rushed it. I think in that situation, they were trying to play Widow again. Uh, yes. However, they, they ended up being stared to that trap, big block. However, that's a corner flip. Bangilista fighting for a loose ball foul in the inside. It's going to be a meniscus. And the actual count on Meneses, his first personal foul. I erroneously mentioned that he had four. It was actually Rio Lubin who had four, so Meneses with just one. We're down to the last three seconds of this third quarter. Well, Abuda trying to get the two points, threw up an air ball. Lucky for him, a Bangilista saw that air ball coming and was in good position for a follow-up shot. Earlier, he split his charities. He makes the first one. They have an eight-point lead with three seconds left in the third quarter. Slowly but surely, a nine-point lead. An air ball here by Al Sol is trying to beat the buzzer. We'll need one more quarter to decide who meets San Miguel Beer when the finals of the All Filipino starts. Personal foul at the top of this fourth quarter. Al Solis is going to be on the line. For the very first play in the fourth quarter, Swift made a different play. They put Nelson Aceitono to the top of the foul circle and use him as a passer as they attack with their small men. Instead of always trying to post up their big men where they were having so much problems with Nelson up there, Jerry was also thrown out of the blue paint. And we have the entire fourth quarter ahead of us with a million and one things that can still possibly happen here. Oh, definitely so. Swift is an explosive team. If you give them momentum, they can make the comeback. Not if Jerry continues to hit those kind of shots. I mean, those are really very difficult shots. Now, the defense was there. He just hit a difficult fadeaway shot. Another 20-point game by Jerry Codinera. Same play with Asaitono starting from on top. Shot clock down to nine. Verhel blocked. It is outside on the baseline. And Jerry does a lot of things, including shooting. Besides that, he also blocks shots when you try to drive to the basket, as shown in this play. Vanessa is trying to hang in there, and Jerry just uses those long arms to swat it away. 61-52, a minute going by us here in the fourth quarter. Guadagnera, a prolific 10 of 17 from the field. And that's a very high percentage. And you have to think that he's not really shooting from the inside all the time. Yes, you know? good Not point. underneath the basket. Shot clock is down to five. They are in a bit of trouble, but they end up with a jump. That's a good break for Coney Island yes. because uh, obviously lying down, they could not do anything with the ball. But the jump will at least give them a shot at the picking up possession, even though there will be a big mismatch in the jump. Coney Island is two wins against one loss against Swift when the Ice Cream Stars lead at the start of the fourth quarter. Now that's a close statistics, although if you look at the control of the game, you can see that the All-Stars really have controlled the second half. It is for Swift to make it turn around here yes. in the last 10 minutes and 41 seconds of the game. So we will have a jump in the keyhole area of the Ice Cream Stars. So the loser here eventually goes on to play for third spot against Alaska. Yes. Bad tap there, although Jerry almost couldn't control it. The All-Stars keep it, and they have a fresh 22-second clock right now. Jerry momentarily the visited press row and just said, Hi, guys. Do you have my numbers? <laughs> I'm sure they do. Scramble! Here come the Mighty Meaties trying to roar back into this game. Three-point shot. No siree, that shot has not worked for them here tonight. It has hurt them because it has been a source of power for them. And the green light is not on on that area. Although I think they did the right thing and they, they pushed the ball up quickly because they want to run. That's what Swift wants to do here. And they cannot get off 
to a good start on the running game. Ooh, almost a three-point play for Capascio. What Cody Island has done so effectively is to put a ball and chain on the feet of the uh, mighty Midis by really controlling the tempo the of the tempo. game. And the mighty Midis have not used a full court man-to-man -man trapping defense, whether trapping or straight up man-to-man, -to, -man, to sort of speed up the game and force the turnovers on the part of the Coney Island All-Stars. With the use of a lot of in, uh, players that are not seasoned, they could have at least forced some turnovers, but they have allowed the All-Stars to go into the half-court game without being bothered at all. Nine minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the payoff fourth quarter. Solis. Vergel Meneses. Boybitz, shot clock cut down to 10. Asaitono gets blocked. The Alumit blocked partially. Vasella tried to keep it in play. Yes, gets to it. Talk of hustle. And the All-Stars fan are alive. Good defense. Another control of the half-court game. Five on the shot clock. Jerry, is he aware of the clock? No, but that's what they want. Whether yes. they make the shot or not, that's what they want. And the lead now is a dozen points, 64 to 52. This is the biggest lead enjoyed by Coney Island in tonight's KO knockout match. 8.48 to go. Boybitz, he is trying to find the shot. Nelson can't get into his shot, finally gets one. That is a power play on the part of Asai Tono, cutting the lead down to 10. A lot of time in this match, sir. Yes, Dr. J, I think what Coney Island has taken away so completely is the first big step of Nelson Asai Tono. He has had to climb into good the shot. Block. Yes, that's a big block. Victoria with a good defensive stop. Good ball break, but Helmi Nessus, and it's a 4 to nothing run. That's their kind of game, where they can come down and play the one-on-one. -on -one. Defense is not set. That's what they want to do. 64 to 56, eight minutes to go. Capasho working on the outside, shot clock down to five. There's Jerry shooting with time pressure. This one didn't go. Capasho fighting inside. Bangalista! Strong offensive rebounding from the weak side. And a big offensive rebound. With 7.38 to go, it's a 10-point spread by Coney Island. Hold it, says referee Ernie De Leon. Evangelista with his fifth personal. Let's check on our motor line. Great fluid fast break. Good steal here by Victoria. And Jerry, like I said, preserving his fouls. This was in the first quarter. He gave that up. He gave up the two points. Jerry is now being rested by Manny Victorino and Alvin Patrimonio has come in for Abuda. Bodinera, 22 points, 10 rebounds, one shot block. Big numbers for the four-time member of the all-defensive team of the PBA. And the intimidation factor against Asaitona. Asaitona now with a little better, clearer view of the floor. Well, they broke that press very well. They broke the trap on Verhel Meneses very well and they knew exactly how to get the ball to Asaitono, who cut at the proper time. Timing is so important in breaking up this kind of defensive uh, sets. 66 to 58, approaching seven minutes now. Patrimonio. Oh. And the captain fully rested for about six, seven playing minutes. And maybe in play actual uh, time, that might be 10 or 15. Duke came, came in and made the two points. Sorry, Dr. J. I'd just like to remind our viewers that the Ice Cream Stars are the defending champions of this particular tournament. And are trying to hold on to that crown. It's a 10 pointer with six and a half remaining. Coney Island and Toto has been hitting 50% of its shots. On the other hand, Swift. Only 19 of 53. Asaitono. Power 
Good play again by Asaitono against Manny Victorino one on one. Still a lot of time in this match. Six minutes to go. Eight point lead for the All Stars. Here's Ray Evangelista taking a serious look inside. Here's the captain, Victorino. Five on the shot clock. This play goes haywire. Loose ball foul, however. Capacho ending up with his fifth. Rasella will move out as Frankie Lim comes back in. Abuda also comes in for Evangelista. Rasella, however, quickly back in for Capacho, Dr. J. Well, obviously, with five personal fouls, they don't want Capacho to foul out at this moment. This ball game is not yet won, and you can see the big drop in the second half field goal percentage of Swift. Only 19%. That's like two out of every 10 shots attempted. Not exactly efficient, huh? Don't win ball games that way. You no gotta way. lift it up. Also in question there, of course, when you have numbers like that, the quality of the shots being taken. Yes, and Nelson really took a very poor shot selection in that last attempt of his. This fourth quarter is down to 5 and 15. Tony Island has four timeouts to go, Swift with three. Frankie Lim, Triple B. He hasn't fallen the whole night. Patrimonio climbing for the rebound. Asaitono emerging with his third. And some very worried Patrimonio fans. They're over there, just beside that goal. They were up in arms there. Well, an extra clip there by Solis after the whistle had been blown. Asaitono going back to his uh, bench, obviously a very tired man, as he has been replaced, trying to do too much on his own. A lot of one-on-one -on -one plays, you know, looking for the fouls, which sometimes aren't there. <laughs> no question about the minutes he has played and the energy he has fed here. Solis with another foul. That will be number two. Both teams have been called for three team fouls. It is still 68 to 60 with five minutes and a second remaining. Frankie Lim, not exactly the best of nights from three point land. Only uh, so far five attempts, no conversions. But he had no choice but to take the last one because he was wide open and uh, the shot clock was winding down. One on one for Albert. And the white shirts are running. This is when they are happiest. However, the play is botched. It's stalled. Hold it. Illegal, defense. illegal defense will be charged against the All Stars and I'll be a technical foul called against them since it's the second time around for them. So two days of preparation, study and hard work. Now points down to four minutes and 40 seconds. And that could be the longest four minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, for the All-Stars, that could be the longest. They have been in the lead since almost the start of the second half, but you can never say. It's, there's always that saying, he who laughs last, laughs best. Well said, Dr. J, we have a timeout. Basketball on a great Friday night, 68 to 61. Coney Island is in front by seven with four and a half remaining. Oh, what's the call? Illegal Another defense. illegal defense. And that now is going to begin to hurt the Coney Island All-Stars. Slowly but surely, giving up points, giving a good 25-second shot clock again. It's beginning to hurt them. Uh, they already got called for uh, one earlier. And Boybits made that technical free throw shot. This is singer Joni Feliciano. Of course, uh, great jazz singer also. And on the lady, uh, the other lady we failed to mention earlier. Well, she's married to a baron, uh, I think from Austria, if I'm not mistaken. But she's all known better as a model and former model Eva Abdesamis, a very popular lady, well known in society. I know Johnny Feliciano, her dad, had a great dance night show and was a great sportsman himself. A missed three point attempt by Solis that could have cut the lead down to half. It stands at six right now. And with 4.12 to go. Patrimonio with five on the shot clock. Jerry, one-hander, wait a minute. 
A foul called on Ria Lubit. Is it on Ria Lubit or is it on Solis? Solis, Solis, Solis. Count that as number three against Al Solis. Both teams have three team fouls. Again, the patience of Coney Island is going to be evident here. Unless you get a clear layup, they're not going to rush it. Patrimonio. Plenty of time on the shot clock. It reached 13. Patrimonio goes away. Well, Alvin, you cannot stop him by using your knees. You know, you're trying to knock him off with your knees. He's just going to use his power to curl around you as he did against Benjamin in that play. Back to an eight-point lead for them. Oh, bad pass. Menezes not being able to fight the double team. Lost the cutter. And Asaitono's got to be sent back in. The lead is eight points. Three and a half minutes to go. Still no pressure, no trapping. Straight up, man to man, being employed by Swift. And that's hurt them here in the second half. They do double team at the post, but they do not trap early. Five on the shot clock. Victorino with a heave. Again, shooting with time pressure on. But as Dr. Jim pointed out, that is, that is exactly what they want to do. Solis sets one three. And they can't hit the three-point shot. Solis giving up a frustrating foul. Al Solis collects number four. They are a little bit. Are checking that Villamin moves out. Asaiton is back in. Distrito in for Solis with three minutes and a second remaining. You see, Solis is really trying and he's trying so hard. But see, having come off an injury and not having played competitive basketball, it's not easy to find the range right away. I mean, he can hit that with his eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we mentioned he missed five of the eight games of Swift in the semifinal round. Finally, they're doing a little trapping here to force up Coney Island. However, Frankie Lim, a very veteran guard, does not rush it. Shot clock is down to eight now, and there's another foul on Asaitono. That will be number four on Asaitono. Swift already in the penalty. The biggest lead of the ball game was 12 points for Coney Island. They have it at 8 right now. Swift, after having led going into the first half, after the end of the first half, and by being overtaken, Sevas never led here in the second half after that. Oh. Coney Island just threw a monkey wrench into their plans. Sawdust into their machine, name it. Big break here for Swift. It looked like that ball bounced off a white shirt on the way out. Although Alvin did tap it, it bounced off a white shirt. I think the correction has been made. The All-Stars will keep possession. Yes. And the management of Cody Island, they're happy too. Back with us here at the Astrodome as we take a look at the hustle board, the numbers, as far as aggressiveness is concerned. Rebounds, the edge to Coney Island, the steals, slight edge for Swift as far as the blocks are concerned. The count here, 71-62, Coney Island is in front with two minutes and 40 remaining and in possession. Marcella looks for a receiver. Shot clock down to 12. Shot clock down to 9. Patrimonio. Losing control, it'll go Swift's way. Well, down by nine points, two minutes and 19 seconds. Not an impossible task, but they have to rush their shots and they have to make it fall now. Again, the double team and a bad pass there, a turnover. And they are falling apart here in the final minutes of the fourth quarter. Mighty Mitis are falling apart. Don't forget, later on in the evening, now on RPN, New Vision 9, join the Faces of the Universe. That's coming your way, 10.30 p.m., right after the newscast there. It's going to be a beautiful experience. Enjoy watching beautiful faces. Rudy Distrito giving up this foul against Frank Lim, which will send Frank Lim to the free throw line. All the advantages belong now to Coney Island. Three team fouls, 
three timeouts left, three full timeouts up by nine, two free throws coming up for Frankie Lim. Yes. But what a campaign Swift has made here in the semifinals, Dr. J, coming in last in the, at the end of the eliminations with five wins against five losses and winning six of their eight games. Well, the veterans, I think, again, pulling through for the All-Stars. Of the rookies, Evangelista played pretty well. And Rosella really helped out tonight, you know, in the absence of Frankie Lim's offensive game, who was split his charities there. Menezes, who was like a house on fire there, has really tapered down, but as I don't know, does not give up. And let's see this traffic defense now. Nasa last two minutes na tayo mga kababayan, hatid sa inyo ng Emperador Brandy. Dito na po tayo sa totoo, Emperador Brandy. Patrimonio escapes. He liked that. I was just trying to call a timeout, but he was just too late. That was a good foul again here by Rosella. They are not in the penalty. And with a minute and 42 remaining, and Coney Island in front by 10. A timeout is taken. We'll be back. A minute and 42 seconds left to go. One timeout left for the Swift Mighty Meaties. Three for Coney Island. Coney Island, all stars. Looking for a trip to the finals on top by 10 points. Only a minute and 42 left. Inbound by the mighty Medes. Coney Island, 14 fouls. Swift in the penalty. Look for some three-point attempts on the part of the Swift mighty Medes. Oh, and even that bounce pass didn't go to the right person. Error after error have hurt. And Rosella breaks the trap with Codinero. It is waiting arms for that pass. And a foul. A minute and 27 left. Codinero trapped by three white shirts, but the foul given up by Distrito. Finals will begin on Sunday. No rest for the weary, huh, Dr. Jerk? Well, the price of uh, <laughs> not going number one. You know, for number one, they did get some rest, you know. Manny Victorino being replaced now by Capaccio. Gallant stand, nonetheless, by Swift. Just we're beaten to the punch here in the second half. Got it straight on the kisser. 76-64. Victoria driving hard, given the layup, but missing that one too. Nothing will fall. Not their night. Close output by Chef Patrimonio. Sure. The, the icing on the cake here. Yeah, that is the nail on the coffin. And Patrimonio does not seem to be hurt the way he's playing. Yes. Three-point attempt by Victoria. A minute to go. And it looks like Coney Island will keep a tradition of the franchise. That's right. Victoria will get another layup here. 52 seconds. There's a nine-point lead now. Oops. Marcella tiptoes across the timeline and he's clipped. His sixth personal foul. Victoria. 16 points. As well as nine rebounds. So... Coney Island and San Miguel Villa meet a new Dr. J. Well, people moving around us are saying replay of last year for the finals. Yes. Of course, we don't know the results yet. Only God knows. And uh, it should be a dandy here. It should be a dandy for the finals. Another lesson learned here for the Swift Mighty Meaties. They will probably return Ronnie Tompkins to the second conference of where they are the defending champions. But then... The All Filipino will again have escaped them. They will leave the All Filipino, although with a although chance to play for, play for third. Another three point attempt, and what a time for Solis to hit that. You know, he did. That had come in earlier. Could have been a lot. 
Could have made the world of difference. Yes, you're damn right. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying, he was given so many opportunities, clear shots, he just couldn't bury it. Director Abit Ramos is firing away endless instructions into my ears. Yes, we will have a ton of interviews at the end of the game and we will get as many of the personalities involved both for the finals and of course we'll try to talk to others involved on the losing side. We'll get them all for you. Of course Ronnie Nathaniels now will uh, is moving about trying to find the best possible personality to talk with. 8072 here. Chef could use their timeout yet. Yes, they are. 81 to 72. We're just 35.9 seconds away from the completion of this game. And don't forget later on tonight, 10:30. I'll have to rush home right after this game to find out the lovely faces of the universe on uh, the other station on Channel 9. That's right. Chef called its last time out. Hopefully they're gonna come for a three-point attempt here again. This one doesn't fall. Albarillo trying to <laughs> he was a bit hesitant whether he would foul Capacho or not. Finally a foul by Meneses and Franco left. 28.2 seconds left in this match. Mighty Midis. The offensive machine. Did not go full speed tonight. You see a little wide open right now, and they only have 72 points set, so they may not even make 80, which shows already the kind of defense that was thrown against them, which lowered their field goal percentage, which got them off track. And um, they were even poised, except for these baskets hit towards the end, to come up with a very low score, even lower than the all-time low as far as the output of a game is concerned. Sol is throwing up a prayer there. Rasella speeds into his front court. And Tony Island is just 14 seconds away from the finals. Upholding a company tradition that began way back when they joined the league in 1988. As we mentioned, they were there from 1988 to 1990 with nothing but frustrating campaigns. Losing to Añejo. In 1988-89, losing to San Miguel. In 1990, losing to Presto. Finally winning it in 1991. Lost to San Miguel in 1992. Then they won it last year against San Miguel Beer. Four games to two. And as you can see, the changes uh, as the uh, big guns have been taken out. This guy has helped tonight. He has concentrated on the game. Usually a very quiet player, but an effective one. Foul is still given up by Solis. That's his fifth. And the All-Star fans are going wild. They will have a chance to defend their crown, Dr. Yes. Well, defending champions usually defend it well. Or they try to. And then the most important thing is to have a crack at it, as they have right now. Mr. Rene Buhayin a little bit easier right now. Yes. Eighty-five, seventy-two. Solis wants to add on. Eighty-five, seventy-four. And Alvarillo giving up the foul. A penny for your thoughts, Chad Treas. Well, usually I think uh, he's very happy that uh, his game plan worked. I think there will be a moment to thank God for giving that opportunity to play again. Yang has, looks very sporty. He did not really show any emotion of disgust, yes. uh, whether towards the players or towards the officials tonight. He was on an even keel here tonight. Controlled aggression, if you may. And that will do it. 
86 to 74, Coney Island is in the finals. Final count, 86 to 74. Being the sportsman that they are, despite all those world world awards, oh, the yes. two coaches uh, meet at half court together with team manager Mariana and, of course, assistant coach Narvasa. Ronnie Nathaniels is with Chot Reyes. Take it away. Coach Chot Reyes, an emotional moment for you, coach. A very emotional moment for you. I know you, you were the underdog, but you had enough character to see this through. Um, uh, it's, it's very emotional because no one thought we would get here. We had to go to this playoff against a team that was favored to be in the, in the finals. And I'm just overcome by the effort of my players. I'm very proud of them. I'd like to thank our manager, Mr. Buayan, was behind us all the way. And we're looking forward to a great uh, championship finals. You know, Coach, like you said, at the start of the conference, nobody even gave you a chance of coming into the semifinals, let alone moving into the championship. But you showed character. And I think if you were looking at big men today, Jerry Cordinera must have been the man. Mr. Boyan talked to Jerry before the game. And he told Jerry he didn't want him to just be superior. He wanted Jerry to dominate. Domination was the word for Jerry, and I guess he showed it tonight. And also the leadership of Alvin Patrimony. I know he's playing with a little bit of problem. He's playing hurt, but he showed guts, a fighting heart. And when you needed him most, he was there. We had to pace him. We couldn't play him too many minutes. But I told him no matter how many minutes he plays, he just he has to give me everything every time he's on the floor. And he did just that. All the players, Olsen, Glenn, Frankie, Ray, Manny Victorino, Bong Ravenna, was crying at the dugout in halftime. And all he was saying was, stop for hell, stop for hell. And that just showed the spirit and the character of this team. Was the game plan to stay close to Swift at the end of the first half? Because you knew that uh, as the minutes wore by, they would kind of break down down the stretch? We wanted to keep the score low because uh, Swift is the highest scoring team in the semifinals in the league. So we felt if we could keep the score in the low 80s, then we'd have a very good chance. And uh, we went out and went after Verhel all the way, and uh, it paid off. Now you're looking ahead to the championship battle. It's a repeat of last year. Is it going to be a repeat of last year in terms of the end result? We hope so, Ronnie. We hope so. But uh, getting here, I'm very thankful to the Lord uh, for allowing us to get here. Uh, my only promise is... We have a motto, we say 100% in this team is ordinary. So in the finals, you'll see 120, 130% every time. Coach, once again, congratulations. You did a superb job and you deserved everything you've got.